Hi, my name is Jamie Pullman. I'm a climate reality leader with the Law Dangerous Chapter, and I'm here with Lisa Hart, the steering board member of the Neighborhood Sustainability Alliance. Lisa, we are here to talk about the Cool Block Program. Can you please tell us briefly about what this is? Yeah, the Cool Block Program is a really unique and special opportunity to connect with your neighbors while creating the block you want and improving the environment uh, at the same time. So it's, it's very, very ambitious and very lofty, but the people who have been involved with it have found it very powerful and it can be really transformative. And at this point in the climate crisis, we think we need all the help we can get. Thank you. And so, uh we're still in the pandemic, um, are there virtual opportunities as well as in-person opportunities that the leader can connect? Yeah, so this is our my first pandemic. So, uh, you know, when we did the pilot a few years ago, this really wasn't on my radar screen. So we don't know. But I mean, yes. I mean, the answer is yes, people can do things virtually. You can reach out to your neighbors virtually. You can meet via Zoom. Uh, we do think actually knocking on your neighbor's door as a way to uh, reach out to them is very powerful in and of itself, partly because people don't typically knock on their neighbor's doors. Uh, but we're going to be very, very flexible because we don't know uh, what the future is going to bring. Indeed. So uh, we've already had this program for several years in Los Angeles. So I'm sure there have been a couple of neighborhoods that already done so much progress and sustainability for the climate crisis. Have any of these members in the neighborhood become the leaders in this program? Have they gone through the training as well? So we actually haven't done the program for several years. We had a brief pilot several years ago, uh -huh. uh, but a lot of those, so I don't know of anybody who has become a leader from the pilot, but one of our former cool block leaders is actually going to do it again because you can never get everything done in one go round. The program lasts about five months. Uh, so she's she's just going to do it again and tackle new issues. And we have lots of uh, cool blocks that have sustained themselves and that have grown and grown to include more people and uh, incorporate more things over the years. So, that, so that's the extent that I know about that. That is exciting that yeah. the leaders have, from the pilot program return back to the show that they really love. That it's, it's energetic, that the connection, you talk about something that they're passionate about. So um, I understand that there's a book that um, explains the five different things to focus on one of them at natural disasters. Can you tell me, Lisa? Um, what natural disasters do the apartment and houses have to prepare for? No, and actually we, we're not using a book anymore. We used to use a book, but uh, everything's online now. And I, I haven't actually seen how all that looks online, but uh, it's all been put into cyberspace. Uh, I don't think there's any specific focus on any particular natural disaster. This program is is made to work anywhere, and of course, in LA, we have specific challenges that other regions don't have, and vice versa. And for a lot of disasters, you kind of need the same stuff, regardless of what the disaster is. Also, the the program is designed to be very, very flexible. So there's a a section on getting ready for emergencies, but within that topic, you really get to tackle what you and your neighbors want to tackle. So. It's very flexible and meant to be customized to your particular interests or concerns. Fantastic. So can you tell me like what the steps would be to take for water conservation when it comes to an apartment and a house? Yeah, uh, it really depends. And of course, an apartment situation is really different. I live in an apartment and you know I don't have my own water bill, right? So I don't even have the incentives. Like if I use less water, I don't pay uh, less money. So, uh, and I have also a lot less control. So it's a very different situation, but a lot of the same, a lot of the same activities 
that you can take to reduce water, and there are all sorts of different ones, apply equally to whether or not you're in an apartment or um, you're in a house. So I hope that helps answer that a little bit. Definitely, and I, I think maybe the, the neighbor may not talk to each other as much about it. Um, they, they, it's nice to make it a part of the conversation. So. Yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, I so yeah, like I said, I live in an apartment and my neighbors and I have talked about the water usage, but I've also talked to neighbors. I mean, people in the building have talked about it, but I've also talked with people about it across the street. So I guess it depends on your situation and your water issues. Uh, yeah, it's all very individual, I think. And, and did you say that you were part of the pilot program as a leader? No, I have not been a cool block leader. I have not been on a cool block. I have been, I have sat in on many, 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 many cool block meetings. So I've, I have a sort of a different perspective uh, than other folks do. Thank you for sharing. So suppose I just moved into a new area. I learned about the cool block leader program. But I don't know how to get started. I don't know my neighbors. Do you have any suggestions? Well, really, so we'll help walk people through. We're starting in January and we'll train people and we'll provide people with resources and all sorts of things. It's a it's a very um, it's a program with a lot that's very self directed but very supported. Uh, but the way we've traditionally done it pre COVID is encourage people to knock on their neighbors' doors. It's more fun and more successful if you do it with somebody else in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, it's nice. I mean, for me, like that feels less intimidating. Um, and, you know, like if you have a kid, uh, you know, kids are always helpful because everybody loves kids, that kind of thing. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's really about kind of old fashioned, old school connecting in person. If, if we can do that, uh, you know, within the confines of the pandemic. I hear you. It can be intimidating to do it by myself, to knock on the door, ring the doorbell, but it's possible. And uh, asking somebody to come along makes it more comfortable, like a social um, conversation, not like I'm interrupting somebody from whatever they're doing at home, but like creating a different culture here. Yeah, and we have flyers um, that people can drop off. Lots of times these days there are gates or dogs or people not home, all kinds of reasons that knocking on the door doesn't work. So we do have uh, other suggestions um, that can help as well. And I should want to know, like, I know that the city has usually an emergency preparation plan but also um, it'd be wonderful to know more about the climate adaptation plan. Does the leader take on the responsibility and do some research to know how the city or the county, um, like the neighbor in those areas, have to meet those adaptation plans? No, not at all. Uh, we have, you know, we have this, what used to be in the book, which is now online, the the actions you can take, and it's all spelled out, like why to take the action, and the steps to go through, and uh, how much time and it takes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and if you want to do, as I think I mentioned, if you want to do your own thing, that's fine. You can do whatever you like. And we're also going to have a lot of support from different city departments already. Uh, LA Sanitation and DWP have stepped up and said, hey, we want to help. Uh, the cool blocks when they're off off the ground and we have our own um, collection of resources to help folks uh, and we're also uh, talking about hosting forums to help educate people about the resources out there so there shouldn't I mean the idea is that the burden is not on the cool block leader also you you rotate uh, meeting responsibilities um, every couple of weeks so the cool block leader is responsible for the first meeting, but then you rotate. So it's really a shared leadership model. Wow. And uh, anybody who wants to learn more about the cool block leader program can contact at, at laclimatereality at gmail.com. We have our, one of our chapter co-shared, Andy Hatala, who already signed up. 
we were looking for seven more people to sign up before the 23rd of this month, which is the, actually the 27th, but it's this Monday. Of course, the experience was ongoing year round, but there is the community effort that we would love to provide for our chapter. And I'm going to share a little quote that Andy has shared. Quote, to be a cool block leader is another concrete opportunity to work together towards a sustainable society. While there is no simple way or means to achieve it, individuals that transform their lifestyles in the innocent remake the community, not just themselves. Transformation is change at a grand scale, and it can occur block by block. On said it take one more action towards an alternative, sustainable future because life and the world demand it. End quote. Thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing with us about the program and I look forward to learning more from you the next time around. Thank you, Jamie.